Hello, in this video we'll talk about transposons, which are DNA sequences that can move from one location in the genome to another, and that's why they are known as jumping genes. The pioneering work on transposon came from Barbara McClintock, and for her work she was recognized and awarded the Nobel Prize in 1983. Let us look at how transposons work. Transposons can work in two different operational modes. In first mode, they can jump from one location in the genome to the another location. And in this process, they don't leave any copy behind. This is known as non-replicative mode of transposition. In the second regime, they can make a copy of themselves and that copy can jump from one location to another. This is known as replicative mode of transposition. So we can understand there are two modes of transposition. First is without duplication and the second is with duplication. You can imagine these things to be a cut and paste and copy and paste mechanism. I know you can relate that. Interesting fact is transposable elements composes 50% of our genomes but they are generally epigenetically silent. Now the question is, what are the function of these transposable elements? How they are relevant for us or our physiology? It turns out that transposable elements are involved in several diseases like myocardial infraction, neurodevelopmental disorders, neurodegenerative diseases, and even it has, neuro, it has uh, immune modulatory functions. That means transposable elements are fairly important. But the question is, how do they work? So let's try to understand that part in a moment. Now the, jump, the jumping genes can jump from one location to another. But the biggest question is, what's the big deal about it? Yes, there is a big deal behind this jumping process. Let's say a transposon jumps from one location in the gene and lands inside a coding sequence of a structural gene. That means it would disrupt that particular gene, right? Now, this particular gene has an open reading frame, and this open reading frame is now disrupted due to the integration of transposon. That means possibly the functional product of that gene would not be obtained. There could be other consequences of this transposition. Let's say a transposon hops and lands into a regulatory sequence inside a genome. Now, this regulatory sequence controls the transcription, right? So, obviously, after integration into a regulatory sequence, it can positively or let's say negatively regulate gene expression from a nearby gene. So, obviously, transposon has activity on, a, on a gene expression as well. So, let's summarize this part. Transposon can show mutagenic effect. They can get inserted into a location and disrupt a gene. They could silence nearby genes by attracting epigenetic modifiers. Transposons can also act as a source of long non-coding RNA and thereby they have great regulatory roles. And lastly, they can act as enhancer or repressor and thereby controls gene expression as well. Now let's talk about the classification of transposons, at least the overview of it. Transposons can be divided into three broad classes, DNA transposons, virus-like retrotransposons, and poly-A retrotransposons. Each of them has their distinct features. Let's talk about DNA transposon first, which has a particular region known as transposase coding region, which codes for the transposase enzyme. Now, apart from that, the other feature is the terminal inverted repeats, which is recognized by the transposes. So let's see how they work. So the transposes enzyme recognize the inverted repeats in the terminals and they cleave the DNA and creates a double-stranded DNA break. Now these transposable element can be integrated to a new region in the genome and thereby it can jump from one location to another. So this is how the integration works. Now let's talk about the virus-like retrotransposons. These has inverted terminal repeats as usual, but at the same time it has two genes encoding for reverse transcriptase and integrase. And both of these are important for the function of virus-like retrotransposon. 
let us try to understand that. So let's try to understand how virus-like retrotransposons get integrated into the genome. So first, the transposon would be transcribed. And reverse transcriptase would make a copy of that and forming a cDNA-like structure. So this cDNA or the cDNA intermediate would be integrated into a new location with the help of the enzyme integrase and thereby the virus-like retrotransposons get into a new genomic location. Let's talk about poly-A retrotransposons which exactly look like a gene. Why is so? Let me tell you. So these retrotransposons differ from other classes of transposons by not having the inverted terminal repeats. They have 5' prime and 3' prime UTR just like our mRNAs. They also have two ORFs, ORF1 and 2. And lastly, they have a 80 rich region which mimics the poly A tail of an mRNA. So they pretty much look like a gene. Now, the ORF1 encodes for a RNA binding protein and ORF2 encodes for a protein which has endonuclease and reverse transcriptase activity. Now, exactly how, uh, how poly A like retrotransposon work, it's beyond the scope of this overview video. In a different video, I'll be discussing how these particular retrotransposons work. Now, let us try to understand more applications of these transpos transposons. Transposons are really important in the field of molecular biology, especially the recombinant DNA technology. Let's say you want to create a stable transgenic cell line. So obviously your transgenic construct need to be integrated into the genome and that is done by piggyback vectors, which are actually transposon based vectors. So this piggyback vector along with the transposes enzyme is injected into the cell and the cargo is integrated with the help of transposition mechanism and this integration is fairly stable. So obviously let's say this cargo is a GFP so you can create a cell line which is stably expressing GFP. Now principles of transposition is nowadays used in ATAC sequencing or attack sequencing and this particular sequencing technique is used to study chromatin accessibility. So, especially in terms of molecular biology, the principles of transposition is fairly important. Now, let us quickly summarize what we have learned so far. We have learned what are transposons, how do they work, what why transposons are important, their implication in disease and biomedical sciences. And lastly, we also learned about different classes of transposition. Uh, transposons. So this was a overview video. In subsequent video, we'll delve into deep of all of these uh, transposon classes and how they function, their examples and their relevance. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.